you've been here. I added it up. You've been here about 430 days now. Good and you, know that. you and Amy were Ohio Buckeyes your whole life. You grew up in Ohio. I think outside of a couple of years that you were in the NFL, you live your whole life in Ohio. Is this starting to feel a little bit like home? That's got to be weird. I mean, you know, your whole life in Ohio and then you come here, it's a little different. Yeah, I think the first four months uh, when I was here by myself until they until they came up after spring break um, to get into schools there to, you know, obviously end of school. But once they moved here, once we got a house, once we kind of started to, you know, I, I say, you know, had the normal family things, it felt like home. But, you know, those first few months, you know, everybody would say, is it home? Is it home yet? Or when's it going to be home? I said, for us, when home becomes home, when everybody kind of moves in, gets settled in a little bit, they start their own little lives and you feel like you're back to normalcy, which is very abnormal. Um, you know, with the kind of family that we have, that's normally what home. Yeah. And you got a big family. Um, you know, you grew up in, in Columbus and Amy grew up in Lima. You guys have this big family. You move here. I mean, take us back to that process of making the decision. You were a guy that got rumored for every job in North America, it seemed like, for a while there. And you, you settled on Wisconsin. And how's that process when you're telling the family? You got four young kids. You got two college kids. And, and Amy kind of anchoring the whole thing together. It's very unique because all situations are unique, obviously, where you're going to move. But I think ours in particular with, you know, a son that is playing at Cincinnati. And, you know, you're kind of his coach and his buddies and all those things. And you got a daughter that's heading to college and was going to be two two and a half hours away, and then you've got two high schoolers and two young ones who you figured the young ones out, it'll be nothing, right? I mean, they, they won't know anything different. And, and uh, to be honest with you, you, you kind of had to go about each one of them a little bit different. And the, and the little ones were the only ones that uh, shed a tear and showed more emotion. But, you know, after you gave them a popsicle or a sucker, they were, they'd were they forgotten about it, ready to move on. But it, it, it's unique. Uh, we were very fortunate in this business to not have to move a whole lot. You know, we'd move one time. And my, the first time we moved, my son was two weeks old, 21 months. And, you know, we were in, ended up being in Columbus for 17 years or so <clears throat> and then went to Cincinnati. But that was a pretty easy transition. Like you said, you're two hours away. And in some ways, you're, you know, kind of a good little connection to where you are. And so this one was unique in the sense that it had to be the right type of place for my family more so than even, hey, what's the best place for that was, to me, as, as much of a unique thing about coming here to Madison and to University of Wisconsin than, than probably a lot would recognize. They figured that we just do a job and where's the next job and what gives you the best opportunity to, you know, win games and win a championship. And <clears throat> for some of us, it's a lot deeper. You know, when, when, I, when you took this job and I saw the guys you were talking to, they were guys I covered when they were part of this program, you know, Pat, uh, Chris McIntosh and and, you know, this has always been kind of a, a, a athletic department almost driven by football. I mean, a lot of them are, but this is run by a football guy who was tutored by a football guy in Barry who became the athletic director who was, you know, lured here by Pat Richter, who was a football guy. So how much does that play a role? And I want to be there because it's a football community. It, it, I mean, obviously, all these big-time programs, football drive, but, yeah. but we got football guys bringing you here. For me, in a lot of ways, I mean, there's a lot of things. that The history here, obviously, what I've always kind of – I've said it since I've been here – you know, what I knew from what Coach Alvarez had done and the way that which he had done it was so unique. But to be honest, it, I, there has a lot to do with that connection. And, you know, Chris McIntosh, the, just the opportunity to get to know him. This is a, you know, I'd say a tough business. Like all businesses, they're, they're tough. I mean, there's different things that you got to be able to go through. But, you know, if I was going to do it, it had to be with not just the right place for my family, but with the right person in a lot of ways. Because as we know that, you know, college football has evolved college sports in general is continuing to evolve and grow and kind of like you know if you're, if you're not hand in hand and you know on the same page with the guy that you're working for I think this is a business he can't be successful and you know that was a big deal for me not that we had a great long relationship like right I mean this is things happen pretty quick but just knowing obviously Chris's background and what he had been through what he had done and you know being at his alma mater was was something that meant a lot to me in, in a way that, like, Wisconsin has been a Wisconsin place, right? Whether you've seen everybody that's been through here, they've got roots from Wisconsin. So that's one of those things as a guy not being from here, being from Ohio, to say, okay, well, I'm not a Wisconsin guy. I haven't got the roots. But to know that Chris McIntosh has got all the roots and knows exactly what this place is about and what this place and his vision needed, to believe that I was the guy that could do that, um, 
that was meant a lot more than just you know a contract or anything like that. Yeah, the father of a son who I sent away to play football in college, fifteen hours away, and you know I think it's a unique relationship that you have with Landon in that you coached him. Amy kind of described it as you guys had a really interesting kind of agreement that no preferential <laughs> treatment. You're gonna you know he's gonna be just another one of the guys to you. I mean, is that how you kind of looked at that? I mean, and, and even though you're away from him now and it was that relationship, still when you're in practice at Cincinnati, you had to be able to look over every once in a while and say, okay, there's Landon over there. I know he's with me at, at work. Yeah, it, it, it was unique. And I had really never, ever coached any of my kids. Um, just the sheer fact of, you know, the business and what you do. Maybe a little bit of helping out in the summer with, with some baseball. That's why I sure. enjoyed baseball. Um, but never had the opportunity to coach a little league or anything like that. So it was different. You know, and and the good fortune was we were, you know, in a program where we had been established for a few years. So at least I knew what he was walking into. But it was unique and different, you know, being on the offensive line and me being with the defense a majority of the time and not in that room. And so those guys could, you know, could kind of do what they need to do, talk the way they need to talk and, and have those you know opinions of, you know, what these young guys had to do to grow. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was it was there was some some things that, I you know, that I, I will miss. You know, and, and probably year one where he was a scout team offensive center and they're just getting, you know, their brains beat in every day by the defense who was at the time really, really, really good. Um, you know, there there was something that I really enjoyed. You'd say it's kind of morbid, right? You enjoy watching your son <laughs> get, get it. Yeah, but you enjoy watching them grow. Mm-hmm. And that's probably something that I didn't get as much of an opportunity to do, you know, in, in the, the young ages, meaning like right in some of those sports sure. and things that they did. Not that I didn't get a chance to watch grow. Um, but it, but that became a unique situation because he you know, he really wanted to do things on his own. So, in some ways, he avoided me more than maybe some of the other guys. Um, but it's something that I definitely will cherish and, and I miss. I mean, what has this year been like? I mean, how does that conversation go when, you know, I think most people are like, oh, Landon Fickle's coming to Wisconsin, right, with Dad. I mean, how does that conversation go between the two of you and what you're willing to And ma- maybe it wasn't handled in the best way. I don't know that it was, you know, kind of talked about mm-hmm. because – I felt like he was in the right place, and I think that in this world of college football right now, with everybody moving and leaving and, and at the drop of a dime, I, I thought that it, you know, it was something different. I thought, look, I, I want to tell you that I believe you're in the right place. You're with the right kind of people. You're in the right culture, you know, and it's an opportunity for you to go earn some things and, and create your own, you know, little reputation, just like every other kid in this program has to do when a new coach comes in. And so I felt like that was a – at least I believed it in my head, it was a really good step for him to have a chance to continue to grow up, even in a different way, you know, with us, me in particular, and, and our, you know, coaching staff walking out the door and having to kind of embrace something that's really different. And I know he's dealt with an injury, an injury you had as a player. <laughs> so that's been a, another added challenge, I'm sure, for him this year. Uh, you have a daughter who's an athlete at, at what I, I joke about, the Harvard of the Midwest, Indiana University. She chose wisely as a Hoosier volleyball player. You, you, I know you at least had one chance to go down and watch her. The family got to go down and watch yeah. her play. So you've been able to fit that at least a little bit in your schedule? Yeah, I, I, I kind of felt like I was no way I was going to get a chance to ever see it. But, you know, obviously with all the extensions of the things that we have, you know, streaming and Big Ten Plus and Big Ten Network, I get to see a lot more than um, than I ever would have thought. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but I actually got to go there the, the right before our first week of the season. So we had a little weekend off. So we were able to go and watch them play a little bit. And, and then they, they were here playing uh, in Madison uh, during our bye week. And so that was really unique that we got to spend, a, you know, a little bit of a, a night, a dinner, take the, their team out to dinner and, and then go to the game the next day. Not that, you know, she was in there playing at all, but just <laughs> that, that opportunity to be around to see and to, you know, show your support, even though I did not wear the Indiana yeah, you can't. T-shirt that uh, like they were harassing me about wearing the next day. at the. Yeah, you can only root for one player. That yeah, I just, coach. it was, uh, you know. They were kind of saying they were going to bring me a shirt to see if I would wear it. And uh, I told her blood's thicker than water, but glad that they didn't. And that brings me to the question of, in this time of transition for your family, you know, for Amy, she she has to uproot, you know, come to a, a new state. But also, she's away from her, her oldest, her two oldest children. It's a transition time for your family. That's got to be tough at, at times, especially for her. You're bu- you're so busy, you probably can't stop to think about it. She's juggling all the family stuff, yeah. but her two oldest are away from her and Landa deals with an injury and, and yeah. Lucas in Bloomington and all that stuff. So that was probably the most unique thing that I don't know that we thought about 
before we decided that this was, you know, the opportunity was, was something we were going to do. Um, that when we moved, it was going to be the first time. Like everybody goes through it, right? I mean, you're, usually your kids go away to school, right? And our kid went away, but he was right there. Right. Our daughter hadn't left yet, but was leaving. So we were in some preparation for that, but not too far. Right. Um, and then as we made this move, obviously the boys come with us, but it's the first time that all of a sudden we're separated from the rest of the family. Uh, I'm not saying it wasn't hard on me, but uh, you're right. I'm very, very, very busy. And, you know, especially in those first four, five, six months where, I mean, everything is new every single day. Um, it was definitely a little harder transition, I think, for my wife especially when they moved here and my daughter stayed even to finish up her last you know month or so of high school. Um, that was very unique and I think a little bit more difficult than maybe we had envisioned. Yeah, I, I can't imagine because I've struggled with one being a <laughs> You want to be with them when you can, but we were all busy. How are the younger guys doing? The four, the two sets of twins, they're, they're adjusting to life and... Well, fortunately, they, they have. And, and I don't know if it's the idea of you know, they say sometimes boys transition a little bit. I, I don't know if that's true, but I don't know that because they're both sets of twins that they've got each other. That's really cool. You know, I think that at least as a dad and, and for sure for my wife, as we talked about this opportunity and we were going to do it, we've always said, well, they've always got each other. So I know we're uprooting them and they, they really had a good core nucleus of things and we're in a really good place and, and what they were doing going into high school. But uh, when they moved, they didn't bat an eye and the uniqueness is they always have each other. So I think that's really helped their transition. Then, like anything, like you, you come here, you get thrust right into sports, and um, I think you you have an opportunity to you know meet people, and make those friendships, and uh, and it's been I think it's been really good for them because it gets them out a little bit of a comfort right. zone because someday this is going to happen, whether it's when you go to college or even when you're down at college, um, it just happens at a little bit younger age, and and with your parents still kind of right there for you. This is an entirely different job. I mean. You literally are recruiting 24, you know, you're recruiting staff, but you're recruiting players. You're recruiting your own players. Yeah. You're recruiting other team players. You're recruiting who have gone into the portal, and you're still recruiting high school kids. Your job never ends. Now. I mean, how much does that pull from the – I mean, I don't know when you guys have time to go to Florida or whatever, warm up for a few days. July Just 4th that, weekend. Yeah, that's about it, right? I mean, there's no time. I mean, no, I, I think you, you got to be smart. I mean, I, there's – there's a balance, and, and you know, if we don't do a very good job, you're right; it it uh, it all adds up. Um, but I think that there it has continued to evolve. I don't like to say change because people would say, "Oh, he's you know, he's not he doesn't want to change with the change." But I say evolve because things have become a bit different. You always were busy, as anybody that's a parent knows. You know, you you've got an 18 to 22 year old. I mean, you're worried, you're busy, and the way we go about this business, like we have 120 which regardless of recruiting and other things means you're always going to be busy. Um, but I think that the, the, the more difficult thing I think on us coaches right now is what's continuing to change. And it's hard for you to maybe build some of those relationships, a little harder to build some of those relationships with all the you know, different things that are going on and guys are pulled at. And, and, you know, and then if you don't keep a guy for three, four or five years, what kind of relationship do you have? And, you vision things as you build a kind of a, a two, a four, and a six year process. And I'm with what's going on, it's kind of becoming a little bit faster, more of a one, a two, and a three year process that like, okay, we, we can't, you know, get away from our fundamentals and, and what we believe is right, but we know there's a little bit of an acceleration. So I think all those things added together is what makes the job, you know, one of those twenty four hour a day things just because you know, as things continue to you know, move and evolve and the end line continues to mm-hmm. change a little bit, uh, you just always got to be able to, to adapt and adjust. And to be honest, if you don't have a lot of really good people around you, you can't do it all yourself. When you look at, I'm not going to get into NIL, I don't think with this, because it's not really, it gets too much in the weeds, but in terms of the portal, you know, Kirk Herb Street this week said it's just spiraling out of control. Um, what would you like to see the NCAA do with some of this stuff? Because because you can't build. You talked about it. You guys are and Amy is brought into this as a kind of a mom to the team. Um, what would you like to? See? What is what can the NCAA do that to make this? Does there have to just be something? I mean, because it, it's wild wild yeah, west. It does. I think that we've got to help our young people to not you know be hasteful in their decisions. Right? I mean, 
Well, what we aren't teaching, I think, is that there's consequences to everything that you do, right? I mean, if you make a decision, usually there's a consequence, right? Good or bad. Um, and by not you know, having any consequence for changing programs or leaving the school, I think it makes it really difficult for guys to make some more, you know, deep-rooted, you know, decisions where you've got to really think things out, right? Things happen really quick, and guys are making decisions that, you know, change their lives from relationships, from development, not to mention academically and in graduation. But I think it just, it's become too easy. And the great thing that I always loved about football and sports in particular is we don't try to make them easier, right? The guys that work at them, the guys that, you know, have consistency and continue to grow are the ones that have more success in them. And right now, it's becoming a little too easy when things are tough to change. Um, so I, I just, I wish they would figure a way that whether you go someplace, you've got to be for a certain amount of time, or if you go, that there has to be some consequence. Not sitting out the entire year. I always wish when they would have did this, like, hey, if you want to leave, you just sit out for it. It's, it's a small price to pay if you're, you know, a freshman or sophomore. It's a pretty large price to pay if, if you're a guy with one year left, you know, and if you're a quarterback and that's what kind of drives a lot of this, right, the, the higher-end guys, if you're a quarterback and you leave and you're going to sit out the first four games, are they really going to put all their, you know, resources into you knowing that you're going to miss the first four? So there's a little bit of a consequence, you know, that – I think makes us, you know, kind of hesitate before we make one of those life altering or changing decisions. So there, I just think we've got to find some way to have some structure for guys so that they can grow and battle through some adversity, but still the option if, if needed, you know, we don't want to hold them back because there's some, there's some good reasons to, for guys to, to leave and to change, but a consequence is what we've got to be able to do and some structure we're just, that's why everybody believes we're spiraling, you know, a little bit out of control is because right now the, the lack of structure is difficult on everybody. Yeah. We talked about this off camera before we started rolling the big 10, you know, this isn't the John Cooper or Barry Alvarez big 10. You welcome into the conference guys like Dan Lanning and, and Chip Kelly for now, I guess. And, and, uh, Lincoln Riley. And, uh, I can't even think who was it. Ryan. Who got the job at, oh, Jed Fish at, at Washington. Uh, this is, I can't even picture USC in the Big Ten. I mean, this is not Luke Fickle 1997 Big Ten football. Oh, you no, know, it is definitely not. And I think the name still obviously rings, and I think that's what uh, we've ult ultimately held on to. We've held on to some of the traditions and rivalries, right? Paul Bunyan's acts. I mean, we're, we're holding on to those things, but the reality is this evolution, this, you know, this development um, is kind of the way of the world, and and – you know, you can kind of go one way or the other, right? You're this traditionalist that wants to hold on to all these traditions, but yet, you know, everybody around you is growing and recognizing that, you know, this has become an, a much larger business that has gone coast to coast. And um, either way, you got to embrace it. Kind of recognize some of these changes that have happened and, you know, what it means to you and your program. If you're not grasping them, you're not embracing them, then you can continue to fall behind. But it is definitely a, a new and uniquely different landscape. It will help us grow football-wise in, in a lot of ways because, you know, some of the tradition things of being in the Big Ten and in particular the Big Ten West are uniquely, you know, just football-wise making you adjust and change a little bit. But uh, I think this was probably in the process for quite a while. It just has taken some boldness and some, you know, innovation guys at the top that uh, finally had the, you know, kind of the guts to break away from some of the traditions and continue to grow. Yeah, it is so different. And you've got an arms race every year for facilities, and I know we're sitting overlooking Camp Randall as it's torn up. Or I guess somebody thinks we need to be ready to host playoff games in December in this stadium. They're warming up the field down there. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't know what all that means. Like, how, how warm is that? I know we've played on a few fields like that, but you know, I think in this region, um, we're recognizing where college football is continuing to grow, and this is kind of a sign that you know, we have the, you know, the idea of making sure we're being proactive as opposed to reactive. And, and I think that's a little bit of that Chris McIntosh thinking forward. And you know, we've got a new facility that's, you know, getting ready to be built as well. And things that probably are, you know, could have used several years ago. Um, but the reality is this is where it's headed. And, and you know, with a guy like McIntosh that has the 
vision to say, hey, this is where you need to be, it helps us. You're a coach that's been and taken a team to the playoff. It's a 12-team playoff for the first time next year. Barry used to always play for a Big Ten title first. You know, he didn't get into that national mm-hmm. title thing, and that was a lot. I mean, to win a Big Ten championship is insane. Uh, how does that does that 12-team playoff, is that the goal, or is it still Big Ten champion? No, I, I think I don't – my philosophy has never changed. It's we got to put ourselves in a position to play for a championship. And I think that's a vague statement, but that's the way we kind of attack folks. And if you put yourself in a position – to play for a championship, as this thing has grown from four to, to 12, you'll have every opportunity to be into the playoffs. And I think that's where it's still open, right? I mean, we, we even this past year, we lost a few games, but even like week seven of the season, we're going to play out. We still are in a position to play for a championship. You know, even – so we lose that game, and we're still in a position to play for a championship. And I think that – that and the big picture of things is where you've got to be really smart, uh, you know, because you can't. It, it always a season is the ebbs and flows, and you're dealing with 18 to 22 year olds, and emotions are a big deal. And to know that that thing is always still in front of you, I think is the way I've always thought about it. And you know, different when I was in a different, you know, league, you know, because that didn't guarantee you a lot of things, but it still was the first step. And I think that's probably where Barry's mentality always was. You know, because first things first, if you put yourself in that position yeah. to play for or be in the race for a Big Ten championship, it's going to give you every opportunity to do some other things. Yeah. How do you make time for just you and Amy? I mean, uh, it, it it's hard, right? You got kids to handle when you do probably, if you're like us, when you get time together, you want to spend that time with the kids too. But but the two of you got to have your time together, right? Yeah, there's been several times in the last, you know, since the season ended that, hey, let's go get something to eat or, or do you want to go to eat with the kids? And it's kind of like they like look at each other like, uh, well, we can order them some food and then let's just go. Or So it, it, there is a balance there. Um, I think it's more just you get so wore out, mm-hmm. right? I mean, we still have ones that need rides. Right. And, you know, you have sports and you have these kinds of things and there just aren't as many opportunities. You know? So I always promise her that, you know, hey, I'm not going to do this till I'm 75 years old. So I promise you that and when this thing ends someday, you know, that we'll travel. We'll do all those things that we have not had an opportunity to do because we were busy with kids and we were busy with, you know, coach. One thing she said that I thought was really a, a, a nice thing to say about you is she's not so proud that you're a coach, but how you, how you do your job. She has to remind me, it. Um, you know, see when you're not in a good mood or you happen to lose a football game or you just have one of those days and it's, you know, so what, why do you do this again? And you know, okay, I, I do this to lift up, pick up, build up young men, make them better, you know, be a part of something bigger than themselves and has nothing to do with winning. She tries to remind me that there's a lot of other things that you chose to do this for and, and don't forget that. Now, do I remember that every day when there's the bad days or there's some issues or, you know, happen to lose a football game or one of those situations? No, I, I kind of get sidetracked because, you know, there's a lot piling on you to ultimately win on Saturdays in particular. But it is. It, it, if I didn't have somebody to pull you, me back in particular to, to center when, when you start getting left or right of center, whether you're really successful or you have those days where, you know, maybe you aren't successful on a Saturday, to keep you in that, you know, straight and arrow in the path and remind you of what, uh, why you do what it is that you do, then, yeah, I, I think that I could stay left of center a little bit too often. But that's where it's really good for us. You know, I believe that you can't do this job that you don't make your family a part of. And whether it's the kids around, whether it's the doors are open, I mean, like, it, it's really, really important to us, and I hope that everybody within our staff feels the same way. And, you know, so that's why that we've had the opportunity to, you know, I'd say be successful, but be successful as a family of staying together and, you know, holding it together, um, you know, because we do it. Yeah. You kind of answered my last question. I was like, how much does family kind of, my last question was, uh, how much does family get you through some of the tough times? And hopefully you aren't one of these coaches that, you know, okay, we won, let's move on. You get a moment to cherish the wins. So many coaches that I've interviewed through the years, the losses hurt a lot more than the wins feel good. You know? Unfortunately. Yeah. Unfortunately, there's there's a there's a definitely a fear of losing that is more motivating to me sometimes than even the winning. But that's another thing that 
the family brings you right back to. It's actually a little bit easier when you have little ones, you know, because you could come home and it was a bad day on Saturday or whatever. I mean, they know nothing different. I used to love it. My daughter was, it was there was no difference, right? To, you know, nine, 10 years old, still no difference. We're kind of almost out of that phase. The nine-year-old boys know exactly what's going on, start to ask questions. So why, now why did you guys throw the ball here? Or, well, you know, because they well, the hear, media I know, I know. Up. But they are grounded. I think that, me, the most important thing, they are the grounding, you know, in all that I do. Uh, and even now, in that phase, right, the nine-year-olds are starting to ask the questions, but the high schoolers recognize it different. And now they're the ones that understand when you come home, let's do something different. You know, let's don't turn the ESPN on. Let's don't turn the game on and watch the other games. Like, if things aren't real good, let's, let's make sure when dad comes home, let's, you know, let's go do something. Let's go out throw the football. So I think they're more conscious of, conscious of it as they've gotten older where the young ones would just get into that phase where they start to hear a little bit too much. You got a few years of that. <laughs> uh, so like, but you surround yourself with family. Your pictures of your family are a lot of guys have, footballs and trophies and and stuff around the, sitting behind them everything up there you got one badger helmet a couple buckies and family your boys your daughter i mean football's family for you it is, it is. and and i've been fortunate to see that whether i was a player and then in my first 10 or so years of coaching but you know you are a little bit of your surprise and i would hope that i would still be this way but to be with Jim Trestle for, for 10 years um, was a very unique experience. A lot of who I am and how I coach and, you know, the way we handle, you know, your entire, the entire staff up here, um, you know, it's a business. We understand that. But there, there's a lot of other ways. Recognizing how hard everybody works from, you know, recruiting people to the coaches to the GAs. Like, I can't tell you that I do the best job, but if I would say anything, within the, like my wife does the best job of trying to make sure everybody feels like a part of it, whether GA's wife or, you know, whoever within the program, all the families, you know, are taken care of. I can be on That slips my mind, you know, probably a little more than maybe it should at times, you know, game week or bowl trips. And, and she's like, well, the family, I go, oh, oh yeah, I, yeah. You handle all that. I, I, I probably don't do really as good a job, but I think that's why the uniqueness of being a really good team. I don't know. I, I know I know I couldn't do the coaching without her, but I also don't think that we would have the type of, you know, family atmosphere uh, within our entire program without her. 